And we're going to sail to the port that we left. We're going to go to the last port. Remember, I took you on a journey. We're sailing on a, on a cruise ship, and we're going. We went from the Garden of Eden all the way down, all each each dispensation, each era, each age. We traveled down to where we are today, and we are in the last of the last days. We are in the last port. If you remember, last means last. There is nothing more. There is nothing more. There is four weeks in a month or five. That's not a good example. There's 12 months in a year. There's not 13. There's 12 months in a year. After the 12 months, guess what? A new year starts. There's no more. There's no more. So we are in the last of the last days and we're going to learn a lot today so i want to start i want to start quickly because there's much to learn what we're going to do today is going to be reading scripture and the reason i want you to read this scripture is because i want you to understand it a little bit more because we're going to dig out of these scriptures and we're going to learn a little bit more from these scriptures we are talking about the last days so if you please uh, get you the, the word of God out, Heavenly Father, Glorious Lord, this is our time with you, Holy Spirit, this is our time with you. Teach us, teach us. We're hungry, we're thirsty. Teach us what we need to know. Teach us, guide us. Jesus said that in the last days you would be our helper, that you will show us and lead us into all truth. And so we are waiting, we are hungry. We want to know how to protect ourselves in these last days and protect those that we love. And, and, and to share with others what it is that we need to do to protect us, to protect us from these evil, uh, perilous times that are coming our way. So Father, we are here, we are in tune with your spirit. Teach us, lead us, and guide us. Father, remove me completely from this. Let me speak only what you want me to say, not a word more. Let me speak, Father, from the heart that you have poured into me your word and what you've shown me and nothing more. No adding and no subtracting. Speak. I am yours. I have given myself and surrendered myself to you. Use me as you please. Touch me, mold me, guide me, teach me. Use me. Use me, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. May every ear hear. May every heart receive. In Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. 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 Turn to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to read. Uh, from from verse 3 to 35 so I'm going to start I'm going to read from the New King James Version if you have it great uh, but uh, it's gonna uh, for some of you it's gonna be a little boring there is coffee in the back I think there's still some <laughs> so there is coffee in the back so you want to drink a little bit to get you awakened um, uh, make sure, yeah, go, go, go and get some, and, and uh, normally we, we, we're not allowed to have drinks without lid, but my fault, I haven't, no, no, go, go, Mija, go, go, but I, it's my fault, I haven't gone, gotten the cups with the lids, my fault, so just be careful with it, that you don't spill, okay, so I don't get in trouble, because you know, they will tell me, Lenore, Nancy, yes, sir, Clean, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, Matthew 24, verses 3 to 35. Now as he, Jesus, sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately. This is telling you that he wasn't speaking to the general public. He was speaking privately to his disciples, to his people. Okay? Saying, they were asking him, tell us. When will these things be? And what will, it, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? They're asking two questions here. They're, he's, they're, they're saying, what will be the sign of your coming? 
and that means something else and the end of the age or the end of the world okay is everybody there okay and Jesus answered and said to them oh you know what let me pause here if uh, you have your notebooks okay if you have any questions write them on your notebooks and at the end we could ask so like that we'll, I'll be able to finish the lesson because it's a long lesson so so Jesus answered them and said take heed that no one deceive you why because in the last days there was going to be a lot of false teaching I'm going to tell you something about the false teaching it sounds so real it sounds so righteous and it isn't can I tell you something Satan was a beautiful angel he was light he was beautiful but in him was deceit we have to be led I want to tell you a good a good um, um, gauge or a good way to pinpoint a woman or a man of God humbleness humbleness someone that doesn't puff up someone that doesn't think they know it all someone that's constantly no the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit it is a quiet spirit when he speak he can whisper and you hear him loud yes so that's a good gauge that's a good gauge uh, I'm, I, and I'm not talking that you have to be quiet no no you, I think you know because I, I'm not quiet as you can see he didn't make me that way that's why I'm here because <laughs> yeah. okay I need you over here <laughs> but but humbleness we never put ourselves above anyone else never so so um, where was I number five. number five who said that I <laughs> thank you for many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars see now listen to this see that you are troubled is that what it says no, 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 no. see that you are what not that you are what not troubled. are you sure yes. see that you are not troubled in other words don't be worried don't be worried when you see things happening don't worry he's telling you don't worry for all these things must come to pass do you see that little word must for those that think, well, I'm not going to go through anything. I know that. Is that going to? No, no. It says, these things are coming. Don't be troubled when they come. They must come. They must. Keep that in mind because I'm going to share a little bit on that. They must come to pass. And the end, guess what? Is not yet. For the nation, for nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be slide, and there will be famines and pestilence. the beginning of sorrows we're going to go into what these words mean the beginning of sorrows then they will deliver you up slide to tribulation look at what the word tribulation Yeah. 
heard of the word tribulation, but it only means persecution. Okay? They will deliver, then, then, after that, then, they will deliver you up. Slide, I think there's a slide there. In that, yeah. Slide, in that. Uh, it says a uh, nine. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for what? Nations. Why are you hated? Do you understand that? Are you sure you understand that? You're not going to be hated because of nothing else other than one thing. Because you love Jesus. That's the only reason why you're going to be here. You're going to go through persecution because when you're sitting down in the restaurant, you're going to pray and they're going to come and say, I'm sorry, but we don't allow that in our restaurant. Because you're going to, because you're going to, you're going to be talking about Jesus. How many, how less now when we go to a restaurant and we're sitting down. I remember there was times where I used to hear people talking about Jesus and talking about church. And now, you don't hear any. I haven't heard any in a long time. Mm -hmm. oh, any. And if they do, oh yeah, oh yeah, what church did you go to? Very low because you don't want to, you don't want to say, Wait a minute here. If they can boast with their cussing and do all that, why can we not stand for what is right? Don't be ashamed to bow down your head and pray. Don't be ashamed to say the name of Jesus. Because that's the name that was crucified. That's the one that hanged for you and me. Don't be embarrassed. Be proud of your heritage. Be proud of your Savior. Amen. Don't hide behind what the world system is trying to do to make you fear so that you don't have to say anything so that they can keep you at bay. Not us. How many times was Peter arrested and, and, and even told, you cannot say the name of Jesus. You cannot pray. You cannot do this on the streets. And what did they do? They went to jail. What did they do in jail? They praised the Lord. What, and then they came out. And what did they do when they came out? They continued. All that is examples for us to do. So for my name's sake, they're not going to hate you for anything else other than, that, than your faith. And, and this time now has been where most of the hatred has been developed with um, the things of God. It's almost to the point where you can't do anything and express your faith anywhere. Because it's not wanted in the schools. It's not wanted anywhere. But it's too bad, isn't it? Because we're, we're going to continue. Verse 10, and then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Make sure, ladies, that we do not get offended with one another. Because we are all people. And we are going to say things sometimes that we may not make it sound a certain way, but it comes out that way. And then people get offended. And guess what? If you, if someone offends you, please, 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 I encourage you to go to that sister and tell them that you, they, that you were offended. You know why? Because if they don't know, yeah. how are they going to correct it? Yeah. And when they, and when, when you go and you tell them, you know what? Um, um, you offended me by saying, don't go in an accusational way, but go and, and, and say, you know what, sister, maybe I misunderstood you. Maybe you didn't, you didn't mean it that way, but this is the way I got it. This is the way it came across. When you do it in a gentle way, you'll get the response in a gentle way. If you do it in an act, you say, well, you know, then you're going to get that response back. You shouldn't, but you could. If they're godly with you, they won't. They'll just listen. But, but 
chances are that you might get it. So when we go to someone and we talk to them, just do it in a gentle way. You know why? Because we want to keep peace. Peace. Why? Because he is our prince. And he is the prince of peace. And we demonstrate his character. Because he is in us. So that should be a part of who we are. Right? Right. Right. So let's walk more in the spirit than in the flesh. Right? Yes. yes. 11. Then many false prophets will, will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound. Remember they were trying to take off, take uh, do away with the police officers? Why? Because they want lawlessness. Lawlessness will abound. And the love of many will grow cold. And that I've already witnessed from a couple of friends that used to go to church. But they say, forget it. That's, I mean, they're worse than the people of the world. And, and you know, what do you do? What can you say? When they, when they see so much strife in the body, they say, what's the point? I got to be made better out here. At least I know who my enemies are. But in the church, everybody pretends to be so friendly, and then they bite you in the back. So we have to be honest in everything. In everything. 13. But, who, but he who endures to the end, what? Shall be saved. And we are learning how to prepare for the end time. We are learning how to prepare when the things come our way, offenses come our way, when tribulation comes our way. What does tribulation mean? Persecution. 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 Per, uh, what's what? Oh, sorry. It said, uh, it says oppression or persecution. Persecution, yes, and oppression, which is the pressure put up. When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of in Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Now this here, what it means is somewhere down the line, not too far, not, not too far from now, something's going to happen. Where, do you remember when, uh, what was it? It was the king of Nebuchadnezzar that took, uh, the, when the, he invaded uh, Jerusalem and they went into the temple and they took all of God's, uh, vessels and his spoons and his cups and they put him over there and then um, they brought uh, their stuff and put it in the temple yeah. that's going to happen again okay so so when it says they don't know if it's a man that's going to be standing in the holy place they're going to stop all the sacrifices all the burnt sacrifices and they're going to put an abomination is someone that is evil or wicked in place of it in place of it okay so whoever reads let them understand this in, da in daniel do we have that one uh, daniel 12 11 it says and from the That's how long that's going to be. Then, then let those who are in Judea flee from the mountains. Let him who is in the housetop not go down and take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, which is a persecution. But I'm going to tell you something about when us Christians, us in the latter of the last days, when we are going to be persecuted, we're going to be persecuted by wicked men. But guess what? We're going to be protected. We are going to be protected. Um, we will be persecuted, but we will be protected from the wrath of God. The wrath of God was never intended for his people. Never. It is intended for the wicked people. 
not for us, for the wicked. He has given us something that shields us from all, from all the wrath. He has, and we're going to go into that in a little bit. From all the wrath, that all the judgments that are coming, he has shielded us from that. And we're going to go into that. Right now, I just want to read this so that you could have this in mind. So that when we hit those points in the lesson, you'll remember. Okay? So what verse was that? 21. 21? Okay. For then there will be great tribulation, persecution and protection. Wicked men will persecute us, but we will be protected from the wrath of God. Such as has not been since, there's going to be such a persecution that has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, sake, these days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Mm -hmm. See, now look at what he says. See, this is Jesus. He's saying, see, pay attention. I have told you beforehand. What is he saying? I'm warning you now. I'm telling you now. Not to scare you, but to what? Protect you. Not to scare you, but to keep you safe. That's why he's telling us. So don't get scared, because he's going to show us how to be safe. He's going to show us how to live. Remember that? Remember uh, what does, um, uh, oh my goodness, what is, um, that means to stand. What does it mean to, oh, shall come. When per, uh, um, perilous times shall come. What does shall come mean? Remember? Shall come. I'm going to show you in the Greek. What does it mean? Shall come. It means to stand in the middle of. When you're surrounded, encumbered by all uh, pressure, stress, you stand in the middle, and you won't you won't be affected by it. That's what that means. And he said, "See, I have told you ahead of time." He's telling us ahead of time. Pay attention. Let's listen. I want to listen. Because I don't want to go through that. <laughs> I want to just... <laughs> Therefore, if they say to you, oh, okay, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashing to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles shall be gathered together. Okay, now what does that mean? Wherever the carcass is, a carcass is something dead, stinky. Wherever the carcass is, what was going to be flying around? Eagle. Eagle. So what does he mean by that? He's saying, look at the sign. If there are eagles up there, that means there's something down there. So he's telling us, I'm telling you beforehand. Be alert of what you're seeing around you. Because if you see the things that are around you, that means I am coming. Okay? I am coming. So, immediately after the tribulation, immediately after the troubles and the woes of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven. You know what I did? I've been studying not so much into death, but in the news that's been coming out, I try and stay up with it, with certain things, because I don't see the news like at all, hardly. But do you know that they have discovered more black holes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know that there are meteorites, more meteorites than they thought heading our way? Mm -hmm. Jesus says that the stars from heaven are going to fall. Now, yeah, am I saying that that's what it is? I don't know. But if, if they fall over here, they're going to come from heaven. They're not going to come from the earth. You know what I'm saying? 
I, I'm not saying that it is, but I'm not saying that it's not. I don't know. I don't know. So, when Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. This is what we're reading. His words from his mouth. And if he saw it to tell us these things, we should be, you know, we should believe it. We should believe it. The stars, it says, the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken and the sign of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Stop right there before you say amen. Guess what? When I read this, I said, oh, right smack in the middle of it. And the sign of God, who oh, I was getting all excited, and the sign of God and the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Yes, amen. And all the tribe of the earth will mourn. You would say that all the tribe of the earth would be, yeah, he's coming. Hallelujah. It's the end of the tribulation. Hurrah, hurrah. That's not what he said. He says, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And I said, oh, oh, you know, I made a stop there, huh? I made a stop there to look and find out what does this here, why is this here, here. So, I went ahead and I looked at it and I, and I want us to go to, um, Daniel, put put up put up put uh, something on on Matthew and turn to Daniel seven because in Matthew twenty four. was seeing things from a heavenly aspect and um, and uh, Zechariah was seeing things from an earthly aspect. Okay? So, Daniel 7, we're going to, chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. Daniel had his, his vision and he said, I was, uh, are we there? Okay, he said, I was watching in the night vision and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. And he became, and he came to the ancient of days. Now, now pay attention to this. Watch, watch. Let me read it again. And I was watching in the night vision. He was having a vision at night. And behold, one like the Son of Man. Who is that? Jesus. Coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days. Who is that? Father God. Jesus the Son came to Father God. And they brought him near before, they brought him, capital H, Jesus, near before him, capital H, Father. Understand that? Okay. Let, uh, stop me if I'm getting you confused, but I don't want you to be confused. Then, to him, Jesus, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one which shall not be destroyed. That, that was Daniel looking from heaven, looking, looking. Now look at Zechariah. Let's turn to Zechariah, chapter 12. Verse 14. And he is looking at it from the aspect of earth. One was futuristic and one was futuristic here on earth. Zechariah 12, 14. When I looked at the word mourning there, I said, why would the people be mourning? And you know what I thought? I said, what would I be mourning? Because I said, I would be mourning 
when he to see him in his glory, I would say, oh, if I was to mourn, it's over. There's no more chance for me to tell my loved one. There's no more chance for me to say, to bring anyone to salvation. <coughs> it's over. Time is over. Who am I gonna, if he is to come right now, time is over. We cannot say, we cannot tell our loved ones about Jesus anymore. <coughs> Do you understand? That's what I thought. And it could be, because there's many reasons why we mourn. It's it's the end of time. But are we all there now in Zechariah 12, 14? Yes. It's in, in Zechariah 12, or 10, I'm sorry. on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication then they will look on me whom they pierced yes they will mourn for him as one who mourned for his only son and grieve for him as one who grieves for his firstborn in that day there shall be great mourning in Jerusalem like morning in in Hadad, remain and plain uh, uh, and the plain of Meg Megiddo. Do you know why they mourn? Because look, if they would see Jesus coming in all the splendor, we can't even imagine. But he tried to imagine thousands of angels, thousands of angels that we had not seen. In horses, vestured in armory to fight. And he comes in the middle. And we see him in all his glory. And we're going to say, oh, and I didn't want this. Oh. I didn't even want to read his word. Oh my God, I didn't want to, I didn't do nothing. Oh, all the regret, all that we cry, he's the one that we pierced. Do you understand that? It's going to be too late. Some of us are going to mourn because we never accepted him. Some of us are going to mourn because we should have done it from the very beginning. But it says all the tribes are going to mourn. All the tribes of the earth are going to mourn. And we're going to have reason to. Isn't that something? It says um, bring those, you, if you bring Daniel's and Zechariah's perspectives together, and you see the Son of Man using the authority given to him in heaven, and stricken shepherd rising to gather his scattered sheep under the, the heaven's reign. Bring these two images together, and the Son of Man is gathering his sheep from where they had scattered all over the world to be the people of his flock. Isn't that something? It just, it just, when I read this, I said, oh my goodness gracious. I mean, I, 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 I told my husband, I cried. I cried because I said, number one, I've got to tell my kids more. i got to talk to them more. i got to tell them, you know, you guys have no idea that we're in the last of the last days. 
Chances are they won't see you, they won't hear you because they're in the world. But you know what? How do you know? How do I know? Is not the word of God sharper than a two-edged yes. sword? Yes. Yes. So let's keep on trying, and let's keep on trying. Father God always gives his people. Did I finish reading the? Oh, no, I didn't. There you go. So, okay, where are we? Where are we? Uh, to, uh, 32? Verse 32? No, verse 12. Is that right? Oh, no, we're done with that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're back to Matthew. Okay. I, was, I was just giving you what morning was. I just want to see if you're alert. Yeah, all right. Okay. So we are back at Matthew 31. 31. I wanted to, uh, because I was explaining how this word mourning, I couldn't understand it. Because we were supposed to be jubilant when we see him coming. But look at what, this is Jesus speaking. And he tells us that, he tells us that we're going to mourn. 31, and he will send his angels with a great sound of, and, of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from all four winds, from the end, to, from the end of heaven to the other. And then look at this verse that he puts right in there. He's talking about this, and then look at what he says. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know, you know, you know that summer is near. What is he saying there? Huh? What did you say, Mika? Um, no. Ariel? So the end times are here, like, you know, the signs. In other words, pay attention to the signs. You're right. Pay attention to the signs. If you know, if I've already told you what's going to happen, you're not ignorant. I already told you, you know. And once you know, you can say, okay, I haven't heard. Once you heard, you heard. So he's saying, since you know ahead of time and you're seeing the signs, you know that I'm near. You know that I'm coming, right? 33. So, you also, when you see these things, know that it is near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, now what generation is he talking about? He's not talking about the generation. Remember when the disciples asked him and he, and he was telling them, that's not the generation. To them, he told them, to them, he said, it is not the end, it is the beginning. But to this generation, the generation that he's talking about is the generation that all these signs are going to come through. And that's us. There's the age that you're talking about. That's the age. That's the dispensation. It's us. This age. It's us. Because they didn't see earthquakes and they didn't have anything that we have now. They didn't have any, they didn't have no, if, if they did, it was, it was not out in the open. All the porn, all the, oh my goodness, what's the matter with the women of this age? Do you notice? Oh my goodness. Oh, I, I don't know what, uh, what was it that they put them, they flashed in the front, uh, they were showing the beautiful gowns that they had. I guess it was an Oscar or something. I don't know what is it. Was it an Oscar or something? Uh, the Oscar or red carpet or something. Do you know what picture came out? There was a, a beautiful figure, but all she covered was all she covered. <laughs> I don't know because I forget that it goes out. 
I said, oh my. The women are using their bodies as, you know. Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen in Queens. So, where am I? 32? No, yes, 33. No, 34. As surely I say to you, this generation, the generation that he's talking about, that all, all these signs are going to happen, will by no means pass away until all these things take place. So, are we going to escape? He says, no, this generation, no, by no means pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away by my words, will by no means pass away. Father God always gives his people heads up when he is bringing judgment. Not to scare us, but to prepare us. If we obey his instructions, we have nothing to worry about. Tribulation is here, but we are being protected. Just as in ancient times. Uh, turn real quickly to Exodus. Chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. Remember when, when, when uh, they were in, the Israelites were in Egypt? And remember uh, when Pharaoh didn't want to let his people go? And Father God said, well, I'm going to bring judgment. And I'm going to bring some, some things that are going to happen. And he said, but he told Moses, tell the people to get some blood and put it on the doorstep, on the doorpost. And when, I, when the angel of death passes through, I will not touch them. Then the Lord said to Mo everybody there. Yeah. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, "From now on, this month will be the first and most important of the entire year. Annually, on the tenth day of this month, announce this to all of the people of Israel. Each family shall get a lamb, or if a family is small, let it share a lamb with another small family in the neighborhood. Whether to share." In this way depends on the size of the family. This an animal shall be one year old and male, either a sheep or a goat, without any defect. On the evening of the 14th day of this month, all these lambs shall be killed, and their blood shall be placed on two side frames, on the two side frames of the door of every home and on the panel above the door. Use the blood of the lamb eaten, use, use the blood of the lamb eaten in that home. In other words, use the blood of the lamb that's gonna be eaten because the lamb is gonna be eaten, not the blood. The lamb is gonna be eaten, okay? So he said, use the blood of the lamb that's gonna be eaten in the home. He said, everyone shall eat roast lamb that night mm, mm, mm. with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. The meat must not be eaten raw or boiled, must but be roasted, including the head, the legs, the heart, and the liver. Don't eat any of it the next day. If all is not eaten that night, burn what is left. Eat it with your traveling clothes on. Prepare for a long journey, wearing your walking shoes and carrying your walking sticks in your hands. Eat it hurriedly. This observance shall be called the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt tonight and kill all the eldest sons and firstborn male animals and 
all the land of Egypt and execute judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. What was he doing? He was bringing judgment. What's he doing now? He's bringing judgment to California. California is one of the worst states. And he's bringing judgment to California. For I am Jehovah. The blood you have placed on the doorpost will be proof that you obey me. And when I... I'm going to read this again. The blood you have placed on the doorpost will be proof that what? That what? Proof of what? No, no. And verse 13. The blood you have placed on the doorpost will be proof that you what? Obey. Obey. Without that obedience, guess what? The dead angel would have gone in there. But it said, the blood you have placed on the doorpost will be proof that you obeyed me. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and I will not destroy your firstborn children when I smite the land of Egypt. Everything that I read you were instructions that he gave them to do before you put the blood on the doorsteps. If any one of those instructions were not done, that blood would be tainted. He would he would not honor it. Why? Because they didn't obey his instructions. The blood that was put on there was proof that they obeyed. He told them exactly what to do. He told them what to wear. He told them to take a stick. He told them to put their walking shoes. He told them what to eat, how to eat it, how not to eat it, what to do, what not to do. He's telling us today what to do, what not to do in these testing times that are coming. If we don't obey what he's telling us to do, we're going to feel the might of the, we're going to feel the might of the enemy that comes against us. Because he, we won't have that protection because we didn't obey what he told us to do. Right? Do you agree with me so far? Yes. This week we are reminded that we have been Porting in the last of the last port, learning how to live in the midst of becoming of coming events prophesied by the Apostle Paul, and that we would be smack right in the middle of it. Perilous times shall come. In other words, we're going to stand because we're going to stand right in the middle of it. To stand in the middle of, to be surrounded by, to be in comfort or hindered, obstruct, impede, restrict motion. No escaping this period of time. Not even prayer. <gasps> Not even prayer. Not even prayer. Wow. Prayer is powerful when a faithful man prays. But in this prophetic event of perilous times, not even prayer can stop it. Prayer can't stop these perilous times because Father God never goes back on his word. Never. Never. But, but, prayer will help us overcome as we stand encumbered in this chaos. That's why it's so important to build the walls of protection. Remember the last time we were here? Mm -hmm. Learning to apply what we learned last week so we can survive during these times of tribulation as overcomers. Slide. Do you remember? Oh, they're so tiny. Remember? One, put on the whole armor of God. He's telling us, put on the whole armor of God because you're going to need it. My daughters, I love you with all my heart. I don't want you to go through any of this stuff. Put on the armor that I have made. Specially, remember the material? With special material. This is spiritual material. Special material. Put on the whole armor. Above all, take the shield of faith. 
Where, what about the shield of faith? Do you remember about the shield of faith? Take and position it first. Take the shield of faith and position it first. Praying every morning. Pray every morning. Remember prayer. If we don't pray, we have no protection. Yes. How can we have protection and we can't even connect to the source yes. that's going to protect us? Yes. Praying every morning gets us through the chaos of whatever that day may bring. Yes. So what? So we're going through we're going through the hard times, right? So we don't know what tomorrow is bringing. I don't know what tomorrow is bringing for me. You don't know what tomorrow is bringing for you. But if you pray and you go through this, you will be prepared to whatever comes. To whatever comes your way. That's how we are saved. That's how we're going to make it through the tribulation. That's how we're going to make it. Read the Bible every day because you need to have the knowledge of this. That's what you're doing right now. You're getting knowledge. If you believe what you're hearing, which is the word of God, if you believe what you're hearing and apply it, you're going to sail through this. You're going to sail. Our weapon is a spiritual weapon. Because we're fighting spiritual, a spiritual battle. Read the Bible every day. Get that knowledge. Study it. Confess. Quickly confess. When you have a sin, quickly confess it. Don't hide it. Confess it to Him. And say, I won't do this anymore. Forgive me. I won't do this anymore. And stop. Make a covenant with your eyes. Remember that one? Make a covenant with your eyes. Don't allow these don't allow evil to be in front of you because it'll, it will be filed in your mind for the rest of your life. Maintain a strong relationship with those whom you are spiritually accountable. You have to connect with somebody. Connect with somebody. I know we have different personalities. You have someone that has your personality. If you're if you're quiet and connect with someone that has more or less your personality. Don't go with someone that's loud or like me. Go with someone that's quiet and you know that'll drive you crazy. Okay. Um, regularly attend church that teaches the truth. How do you know if a church teaches the truth? The congregation will show you. The congregation won't tell you. The congregation will show you. What you see in the congregation will tell you if the truth is being taught there. Because you will see humbleness and you will see love. Doing this habitually may not stop the perilous times, but it will empower us with strength and confidence to stand, having done all stand. Amen? Amen. 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 Ephesians 6, 11. Slide. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the world. And you, if when you speak the truth, don't lie because when you lie, you're contradicting who you say you are because you are a child of God. God is truth. When you lie, you're not a, you're not your your what you're saying to other people is that they profess to be Christians but they're lying be, because they're lying. And who is the father of lies? That is Satan. Satan is the father of lies. So, but if you walk in truth, just speak the truth. You know, the truth sometimes makes us feel uncomfortable. But speak it. It's better to feel uncomfortable than to go to hell. It's better to feel uncomfortable than to carry to be lying. Lying is of the is of Satan. Why would you want to have any kind of his character in you. Speak the truth. Sometimes, like I said, it makes you feel uncomfortable. But if, if you just take it, receive it, throw out what is flesh, keep the truth, and you'll be okay. Amen. You'll be okay. 
um, the truth. And then what? What is righteousness? Live a good life. Live a godly life. A life of honesty. A life of integrity. That's not bad. That's not a bad life. Is that something that you can't do? My goodness. It's something that you, it's, it's reachable. Yes. We can do it. Mm -hmm. Just live a good life. Don't lie, don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery. I mean, those are things we can do. They're easy. Right? They're easy. They're easy. It isn't difficult. It isn't difficult. So we're, we're, we're already clothed with armor. Then read the word and study the word, the gospel. Share Jesus wherever you can, whenever you can, whenever there's an opportunity. Share him. The way you share him is love. A hug, a smile, a gift. My door is always open for gifts. <laughs> then, then is what, what did I say was that one? Yeah, okay, it's shoes, the gospel. Okay, so then, above all, above all, you take faith. Because if you have truth, you can't have truth without faith. Because faith is believing. So if you believe in truth, you have faith. If you believe in living a, a, a righteous life, you have faith. If you believe in studying the word, you have faith. So you position faith in front of everything. Mm -hmm. Take up the shield of faith. Position it. It will cover you all the way around. When the enemy attacks, you have your faith to stand on. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why we're going to make it through. Faith. Mm -hmm. We're going to make it if we have faith. If we Amen. believe in the Son of God. Yes. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Stop saying, woe is me. Stop saying, woe is me. And stand up and say, here I am. Yes. Here I am. I'm not going to let the enemy defeat me. Amen. I'm not going to let. We're all going to go through trials. We're all going through trials. We're going to go through tribulation. And we're going to go through some hard ones. But you are being taught this so that you know what to do when you're going through them. If you just trust him, he will take you through it. Yes. Because we're going to love him. We're going to follow him. Make up your mind to love him and follow him no matter what happens. When Paul was in the ocean, in the storm, all by himself, that huge storm with sharks and who knows what else, he was there. He didn't give in. He didn't say, woe is me. Oh, Lord, I'm going to die. No, no, he hanged in there. We haven't gone through stuff like that. We haven't gone through stuff like that. We're going to go through some hard ones. But you know what? We stand firm in what we believe. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Do you believe that? Amen. So if we believe that, we can stand in this thing. Because we know that he is with us. We don't escape this horrible age. In fact, look around you. We can sense the shifting and the changing that is taking place in the world. It's time to wake up from our slumber state. Let's, let's ask ourselves this. If you still are questioning whether we are going through tribulation or not. Let's ask ourselves this. Did we escape the pandemic? The pandemic is a plague. Are we escaping the atmospheric river storm? We are in the we are already the second week of spring and there's a storm. It is cold. I have a sweater on. You have coats on. We're supposed to be seeing the blossoms on the trees and the sun is supposed to be coming out and we're supposed to be seeing spring come out, the new life come out. We're still in the cold. It has not, it, it's unprecedented. Are we escaping fungus virus? There is another virus here in California, like COVID. It's called a fungi virus. virus. And it is spreading fast. Okay, it is pretty fast. It hits a lot of the people uh, that, have, that have like catheters or have to wear things because it's almost like a, a fungus, it's almost like a, um, uh, what do you call it when you get that, uh, 
tal vez en the hospital, staph infection. It's like that. It's similar to, it's similar, but it's fungus. So, it, uh, no. Mm -mm. So, so are we escaping it? No. More and more people are contracting that virus. Are we escaping the fires? Are we escaping the shootings? Are we escaping the earthquakes? Uh, look at the earthquakes that have been happening here in California. Are there tornadoes? Do have a tornado warning? In Los Angeles! No, in the Dara Fireball. Also? Like, uh, yeah. There was like a, they were like warning. Right, <laughs> and in Los Angeles, they had a tornado. In Los Angeles. Are we escaping the floods? Are we escaping the scorching heat waves that increase in intensity each, each year? Are we escaping the diseases and the famines? Are we escaping the intense hatred of our Lord Jesus Christ and all he stands for? No. Look around you. All these events have been going on before, but very far and in between. But as time draws an end to an end, we notice that the things are happening more often. According to Jesus, the last days of the contractions will start slowly at first. Then the events will occur closer and closer as we get into the last. And we are in the last. When our Lord was crucified, the prophetic clock started. The signs became more noticeable. Jesus called them the beginning of sorrow. But he said that that present generation, which is us, not also we should be troubled. Why? because he's already overcome. It was not the last of the last, the end. It was the beginning of sorrows. That was, when we remember we told them, don't, don't, it's the beginning of sorrows. That was the beginning of the labor pains. Mm -hmm. Now we're in this generation, we're, we're seeing them often, often, we are in the latter part of delivering. We're at, almost at birth. We're almost at birth. And not to be afraid, but to be prepared, right? And not to be afraid, but to be prepared. Um, by using the word sorrows, like a woman in travail just before birth, Jesus was telling us that his return and the end of the world or age is right upon us. And when it seems that it has reached its worst, his, this period will end and Christ will come. And a new prophetic time period will be birth. Mm -hmm. How beautiful it's going to be to live a thousand years with him. Mm -hmm. Take notice of what areas the take notice of what areas the sorrows will be felt when everything starts winding up. It will be felt in the atmosphere, atmospheric storms, black holes, meteors hitting in collision with Earth. In the physical structure of the earth, earthquakes, in politics, everything is being turned around. What was once good and pure is now called bad and hateful. In the world events, the world has gone mad. In society, lust, uh, lust porn, pervertness, deceit. Jesus didn't have us, Jesus didn't leave us alone to go through these perilous times without his help. Slide. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. We need to learn what we are going to do to protect ourselves and our loved ones. We must fight on yourself with knowledge and resolve or decide that you're going to make a stand for what is right. Not our will, but His will be done in our lives. Separate yourself from the sins of the world. Be holy as He is holy. The Holy Spirit is showing us the signs and what to prepare 
and wants to prepare us for this wrap-up age and we're be that we are beginning to enter. Father always prepares his people ahead of time. In the midst of chaos, we will stand. Father God is not trying to scare us, but to prepare us. Amen? Amen. Did we learn something? Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Amen. And we're going to continue learning. And we're going to continue to grow. Because in the, in the other weeks to come, he's going to show us what to do, how to do it, and uh, how to apply it to our lives. So we already know that we're going to go through these things. We already know that uh, mm -hmm. the only way we're going to make it is with our faith. Mm -hmm. Our faith. We have to have faith. Um, so next week, uh, our sister Lori is going to come and share with us next week. And then uh, the following week, uh, I will continue and bring some more information. Right? Because okay. we need to know. Um, anyone has a question? Anybody has a question? Uh, am, I, am, am I making myself clear? Am I, I don't want to confuse anybody or anything. I, I, I'm a very simple person, so I like, I like the simplicity. Oh, wait, what? Huh? Oh, was it? Okay. But you understood it? Okay, okay. It's okay for it to be deep. It's okay. We need all the nutrients we can. Oh, oh, told. Oh. But you know what? I don't say it in a bad way. I don't put myself down. I say it in a boastful way because he says he will take the simple and confound the wise. So, in, in that sense, I say it. In that tense, I say it. I am simple. Um, if he can use me, how much more can he use? So it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Those that know me well know that it is in me, that it is him in me. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you the glory and the honor. And just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for revealing to us, for revealing to us what we need to know, for showing us, for guiding us, for instructing us. For answered prayer, Father, we will not be afraid. We will not be afraid, Lord, because you are with us. Greater is he that is with us than he that is in the world. Amen. We are not to be afraid. Oh, you are the host. You are the captain of the host, the captain of, of the uh, heavenly army. You are the captain. So why are we should be afraid? No, but we are to prepare. How simple the preparation is. How simple all it takes is obedience to what you ask us to do. That's all it takes, Father. So, Lord, that we may love you and that we, Father, may want to be with you so that that, that desire may get us to move and be obedient to what you tell us to do. So we give you the glory and the honor. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for what you're telling us and showing us. Thank you so much. We, de we leave from each other, Father. We depart from each other. We take each other in our hearts and go with each other. But we never, never leave you, Lord. You live and dwell in us. Yes. We give you all the glory and the honor. Yes. May, Father, you protect uh, these beautiful hearts as they go home. Protect them, take them home safely. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say, Amen. 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 Amen.